So here's what we need. We've got uh, our distilled white vinegar, some salt, paper towels, and some tarnished pennies, as tarnished as I could find. So I thought I'd pull out some pennies at various stages of oxidation and reaction. So like here's one that's still pretty shiny, but there's uh, on the ridges, you see some copper oxide forming and that's the black stuff. Um, here it's quite a bit more oxidation, but still some shiny parts, probably where there's wear and it's been worn off. That one's just about covered in copper oxide and eventually you get that patina or verdigris, like the Statue of Liberty green color a lot of people think that's copper oxide, but it's much more complicated than that. The process starts when metallic copper is exposed to the air and reacts with oxygen to form copper one oxide, which is actually kind of pinkish in color. The copper loses one electron to become positively charged in the process of oxidation, while the oxygen gains electrons to become negatively charged in a process of reduction. In the next step, copper is oxidized once again, forming copper two oxide. Sulfur in the air can also oxidize copper to form copper two sulfide. Both compounds are black. In both cases, the copper ends up in the plus two oxidation state. Finally, the copper two oxide can react with carbon dioxide and sulfur trioxide in the air to form the familiar verdigris or green patina. These pennies show all the stages of oxidation. So here's what you do. I'd say to start out with an entire cup of vinegar to make sure you have enough at the end. And then maybe about one teaspoon of salt. You could try some more, it might make things go faster. Make sure all the salt is dissolved and then dump in the pennies. I've got about 20 or 30 here, but I'd really try to go with 50 or even 100 if you can find them. You can see that the vinegar cleans up the pennies by dissolving the tarnish. And that's what we're looking for because the tarnish contains copper ions. Okay, I'm ready for the next part where I'm gonna take the pennies out. I'll put half of them right onto the unrinsed paper and the other half I'm gonna rinse really well with water and I'll dry them out here. All right, I'm gonna let these dry. If I see anything happening, I'll turn the camera back on. It's like, oh yeah, now there's really something. You can see some of these are even getting that patina, that green. So that's a pretty accelerated process. Here where we rinsed it all off, the process stopped. Everything looks more or less like it did. Although in fact, over time it will do that also. It will just take much, much longer. After a while, there's quite a bit of verdigris, especially if you start with very tarnished pennies. Then the next thing is to dump them into the vinegar and see if we can dissolve that verdigris, uh, which means that we're going to be dissolving the copper ions in solution. And that's where the blue comes from that we can see. Those are copper ions in solution. So take them out again. These were some fresh pennies that were pretty clean and uh, spread them all out. And we'll put the time lapse on and you can see over time that yes, they get tarnished, we start to form some more verdigris. The idea is to repeat this process at least three or four times. Each time your solution will get a darker and darker blue showing a greater concentration of copper ions. You'll also find that each time you run through the cycle, the pennies will get more and more verdigris faster. All right, I'm gonna try to filter this here. Get rid of some of the extra stuff. Eventually I figured out that using a funnel was a lot easier. I set up two beakers with copper solutions and put an iron Allen wrench in one and some aluminum foil in the other. Again, the blue color comes from the hydrated copper ions, while there's also likely to be chlorides and acetate ions, maybe some others, which are colorless. Then I set this up as a time-lapse. 
A close-up reveals that there's a colored solution which turns out to be yellow coming from the iron. The yellow is caused by iron 2 ions in solution. Over time, that yellow solution mixes with the blue solution producing a green solution. In both cases, the blue copper ions are now precipitating out of solution as metallic copper. The solution on the right is colorless because aluminum ions are being produced and they are colorless in solution. You have to really be patient because the reaction with the iron actually takes at least 24 hours to fully complete. To summarize, the neutral elemental iron is oxidized to the yellow plus two ion, while the copper two ions, blue in solution, are reduced to the elemental metallic copper form. On the right, instead of a colored ion being formed, the colorless aluminum plus three ion is formed. Thus, the solution is colorless. Again, copper is being reduced to the metallic form. At this point now, we'll want to filter out the solutions and see what they look like and see what kind of copper we can recover. All right. Wow, that looks pretty clear. I'd say we probably got all the copper out of there. Okay, well, here's what we get with the aluminum foil. I mean, yeah, definitely looks like nice bright copper. After it dries, uh, I think we're going to see some oxide and some other stuff, though. I got a little bit of a haul of copper there all together. As I said before, the yellow solution here is caused by iron 2 ions, but over time they'll oxidize when they're exposed to the air to iron 3, which is going to be a darker red color. I put in a little test object here, a very clean piece of iron, to uh, just to make sure I got all the copper out, and I think it's pretty much gone. I'll go ahead and filter and see what we can recover out of this. Little filtering makes the solution look real nice. Looks like we got a pretty good haul of copper and spread out it looks nice and bright red. After sitting out for a while the solution is a mix of iron 2 and iron 3 ions. So here's a fun little side experiment. If we add some steel wool which is just elemental iron to the solution we see that the iron is being oxidized to the plus two state. Those electrons are actually being received by iron three ions, reducing them to iron two. So overall, the solution gets yellow as it forms more and more iron two ions. Filtering out the crud from the steel wool leaves a nice yellow solution. The next thing is to add some hydrogen peroxide to the solution. The hydrogen peroxide adds reactive oxygen, which can then accept electrons from the iron 2 ions, leaving iron 3 ions, and the solution becomes a darker brown. For fun, we can add some more steel wool and get the solution back to the iron 2 yellow state. The last step is to see if we can get some aluminum to reduce the iron 2 ions back to metallic iron. As the yellow iron 2 ions leave the solution, it should clear up and become colorless. Let's see what happens. Well, looks like nothing's happening. This has been going on for 12 hours. I wonder what to do next. So I did some research and I read about artists using iron 3 chloride to etch aluminum. So I left this out for a couple of weeks to get the iron 2 to oxidize back to iron 3 and gave it a try again. I left some of the iron 3 chloride on the right for a comparison. I see that there's a reaction taking place and that the solution is becoming yellow, showing that there is a reduction taking place of the iron, uh, but will it ultimately become clear? Had to add some salt just to see if I could really get this to go. And it did make it react more, in fact, the solution got reasonably clearer, but still a little bit yellow. I suppose this corrosion on the aluminum is the type of thing the artists are looking for. There appears to be some kind of metallic powder here. To determine if the precipitate is iron, 
I thought I might try its magnetic properties. I don't see anything coming up, so now I took out the big guns, the neodymium magnets. And still nothing. Ultimately, I'm guessing it must be some residue from the aluminum. And perhaps I should have predicted that result, since if it was that easy to reduce iron to its metallic state, the Iron Age would have happened a lot earlier.